Praise the Lord, everybody. I've got a Bible study for y'all today. And I'm going to be starting up a new series today. And going to uh, go ahead and, and give you the subject of the series. Um, for the month of April, I've got uh, four, mes four messages, starting with this one. And it, I'm calling it my Deliverance Series. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and get in, in the text today. I'm going to read everything from the New King James Version. I'm going to read from the book of Exodus, chapter 12. I'm going to read verse 37 through 42 and skip over to 51. Then the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Succoth, about 600,000 men on foot besides children. A mixed multitude went up with them also, and flocks and herds, a great deal of livestock. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they had brought out of Egypt. For it was not leavened, leaven because they were driven out of Egypt, and could not wait, nor had they prepared provision for themselves. Now the sojourn of the children of Israel who lived in Egypt was 430 years. <coughs> and it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, on the very same day, it came to pass that all the armies of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night of solemn observance to the Lord for bringing uh, them out of the land of Egypt. This is that night of the Lord, a solemn observance for all the children of Israel throughout their generations. And verse 51. And it came to pass on that very same day that the Lord brought the children out of the Lord brought the children out of Israel out of, out of the land of Egypt according to their armies. And this is my title: Deliverance comes from God. <clears throat> All right. The greatest event in the book of Exodus is the actual Exodus, the departure of the children of Israel from Egypt, the house of bondage. Israel was dwelling in Egypt for 430 years. Bondage and slavery became the norm for the children of Israel. Bondage and slavery was all they ever knew. Their, days, their day is as follows. Get up, go to, go to work, go home, eat dinner, go to sleep. A continuous cycle for more than four centuries. That's a very long time. Before God came into our lives, we were all in sin. Sin was our norm. All we ever knew it was what we wanted to do. Even those who have encountered God get captured by their own Egypt and are bound in the chains of addiction habits and their sin. <coughs> it has always been God's will to deliver his people from Egypt, sin and bondage. Now I'm going to run through the book of Ex I'm going to run through the Exodus. I will give you my Cliff Notes version. In Exodus uh, uh, chapter 7 through 11, we have the Ten Plagues. We have the, the first plague was water being turned into blood, two was frogs, three lice, four flies, five livestock death, six boils, seven locusts, or I mean hail, eight locusts, nine pitch darkness, and ten death of the firstborns. The reason for, of these plagues is God is God's working in loosening the grip that Egypt has on his people. God draws us to him. He loosens uh, Satan's grip on us. He even loosens the chains of addiction and habits and sin that binds us. In Exodus tw 12, we have the Passover. When the angel of death is smiting the firstborn of Egypt, God did give his, chill, his people instruction. That is to take the blood of the lamb and smear it on their doorposts. That way God could come between the angel of death and the houses of his people who obey his command. God is not going to force you to draw near to him. You have to want it. You have to want him to deliver you from the sin or bondage that you are in. It's by your obedience to him that allows him to move in your life and deliver you from your sin and bondage. <clears throat> in Exodus chapter 13, God manifests himself as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Using this manifestation, he is leading and directing his people through the wilderness by going before them. We don't have a pillar of cloud or fire today, but we still, uh, we do still, we do still have God guiding us though. We have his word and his spirit leading and directing us in our lives. God provided his word and his spirit to his people so that we may not be left without direction in our wilderness journey. 
In Exodus 14, the Egyptians actually pursue after the children of Israel, seeking to destroy them. Now, Satan will not let you get out of Egypt's sin and bondage so easily. He will fight you all the way until you are safe in the promised land. He will throw all hell against you. The amazing thing is this. Gonna read Exodus 14. Gonna read verse 19 and 20. <clears throat> and the angel of God who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud went from before them and stood be behind them. So it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. Thus it was a cloud in darkness to the one, and gave light by night to the other, so that one did not come near the other all that night. God comes between the Egyptians and Israel so his people can escape at the Red Sea. When we pursue God in deliverance, God will take you all the way. We just need to keep on going forward. He'll come between us and our enemy. Now, the book of Romans. Gonna read from chapter 8. Gonna read verse 31 and 35 through 39. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Verse, th verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are not more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Whew! That's one of my favorite scriptures. If God is for us, then who can stand against us? Nothing can stand against us. If God is for us, nothing can pluck us from God's hand. Now, Israel is in a predicament, however. The way ahead is blocked by the Red Sea, and the Egyptian army is held back at the rear by the pillar. What happens next? Gonna go back to Exodus 14, 26 through 31. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the waters may come back upon the Egyptians, on their chariots and on their horsemen. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and when the morning appeared, the sea returned to its full depth while the Egyptians were fleeing into it. So the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Then the waters returned and covered the chariots, the horsemen and all the army of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. Not so much as one of them remained. But the children of Israel had walked on dry land in the midst of the sea and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and to their left. So the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Thus Israel saw the great work which the Lord had done in Egypt. So the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. <clears throat> Whew. Now God had his people come to the Red Sea for a reason. God tells Moses to stretch out his hand over the Red Sea to see it part. The Red Sea parted, allowing the children of Israel to escape from Egypt. And as the Egyptian army came after them, the Red Sea washed them away. Now we need a Red Sea to permanently separate us from Egypt, our sin, and our bondage. Our Red Sea is being submerged under the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Only the blood of, uh, and the name of Jesus Christ can free you from sin and break the chains binding you. There's power in the blood in the name of Jesus Christ. The first thing we need to do right after deliverance is this. Change your diet. Exodus chapter 16, verse 1 to 3. And they journeyed from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came to the wilderness of sin, which is between the e Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after they departed from the land of Egypt. Then the whole congregation of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said to them, Oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the pots of meat, and when we ate bread to the, to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill a, this whole assembly with hunger. <clears throat> so Israel was, didn't go too far 
and the people were already craving the Egyptian diet they left behind. They were so accustomed to the Egyptian daily, they are having trouble adjusting to the new diet of manna from heaven. After deliverance, we need a diet change, or we will be inclined to go right back to Egypt into the house of standing bondage. We would take that strip of land right back into Egypt. We need to get rid of the Egyptian appetite of sin and bondage. We need to change to a godly appetite. We need to start feeding on the manna from heaven, the things of God. <clears throat> we need to be feeding on the word, his spirit, prayer, fasting, fellowship. In conclusion, to conclude the first part of the series, I want you to remember this. Deliverance comes from God alone. We can't deliver ourselves from sin and bondage. Only God can deliver you. God delivered Israel from the house of Egypt, from the house of bondage in Egypt, and He, He can and He will do the same for you and I. So my next three messages will cover three things uh, that we must do to position and align ourselves for deliverance from our sin and bondage. So stay tuned. God bless you all in Jesus' name.